Shelly, Shelly, I'm admitting one more person, Mike Pearson. Well, Mike yeah. Pearson is our uh, Deputy National President. And Mike Pearson is one of the highest awarded uh, police officers in the country for bravery. He has three bravery awards and one of them involved a bomb scare. A nutter bought a bomb in a box in and put it on the front desk of his police station, it's a senior sergeant, and he made the call. He said, okay, everyone clear the streets, everyone out there claiming a path to the Oval. And he walked that box by himself. Wow out and stood, put it in the middle of the oval and put it down so the bomb squad could get it. That's Mike Pearson. He's astonishing. Mike, wow. I, Mike I just unmuted you. You can, you can speak, we can hear you. Hello? Mikey, speak up. We want to say hi to you. He's probably getting his wife to sort it out for him. I mean, he's, he's good, but he's probably shy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, um, i got to get control of this meeting because you guys will just take over. <laughs> and um, I only have a few a few moments left as a president, so I'm going to wield the power. Um, then I'm going to hand over to Romani. So that's all coming up soon, <laughs> and it's going to come up faster than you think. Another guy that might be joining us is James Preston. Now, he might join us while Sally's doing her presentation. So I'll just um, make a quick statement about James Preston. Um, James is the recipient of the Paul Harris Fellow um, that Cookie actually gifted points for. Um, so James hopefully will, um, will join us. And if not, I'm sure he'll listen to the recording. And James is another one of those in the Australian Bravery Association who does incredible things for humanity and for the community. He's so, also technologically challenged. So he's right now he's going, oh, I can't get in. So we'll get him set up for a future meeting. You can meet him. And as that. Romani said, hit the other red button. Um, <laughs> so Sal, are you, are you yep. getting ready to bring yep. your presentation up? And yeah, uh, I'll just whenever. okay. So Sally Gregory is a is a global trekker, and she's also um, on the um, executive of the Australian Bravery Association. And I'm going to let Sally do all the talking because she does it so well. And she's going to tell us about the Australian Brave Youth Award. And um, over to you, Sal, if you can get your screen share working. Sure. Okay, how's that? Perfect. Great. Okay, everyone, well, it's a very big uh, privilege and a great pleasure for me to be able to uh, present to you uh, something that is what I call my life's porpoise. Haha, <laughs> diving joke there. Uh, supporting the Brave Bravery Award recipients of Australia. And one of the, uh, the roles I have is uh, as the chair of the Brave Youth of the Year Award. So over the next 15 minutes, I'll be introducing you to some remarkable young Australians who through their acts of bravery have saved many lives and in some cases have changed the fortunes and the future of their family by putting their life on the line. It's important to also note that due to time constrictions, I'm not able to introduce more of the wonderful brave kids who we value just as much. Uh, so the stories I share will uh, give you only a glimpse into the bravery of the youth around the world on a daily basis, but will leave you with a wide range of emotions and feelings of pride and sorrow. So I'll just give you a little bit of background on the Australian Bravery Association. That's our logo there. You can see the crown at the top. This means that we are under the auspices of the uh, Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of our Commonwealth. And we are uh, supported by the Commonwealth of Australia and uh, the Governor General, General, who is the Queen's representative in Australia, is our patron. So we're very grateful for that. And you see this red tab up the top here? This signifies the colour of bravery awards here in Australia. They're all red. And that red signifies blood spilt on behalf of another. So... The Bravery Association, the ABA, is a not-for-profit association that 
recognises distinguished acts of bravery and gallantry by members of the community. Its members come from all social and cultural backgrounds and have one thing in common. They've all laid their life on the line to save another, um, often a stranger. It's not well known that acts of bravery often create huge negative impacts to the life of the rescuer due to the injuries received. Some are physical, some are visible, some are not, some are psychological. So the Bravery Association aims to support those who risk their life to protect life, property or the environment. Uh, the members, as I said, all shapes and sizes, uh, generally are civilians, but we have uh, quite a few emergency services personnel and armed forces people coming on too for things that they did in times of peace. So, as I hinted at before, it's not well known, but um, there's generally a huge price to pay uh, for an act of bravery. And I'm sure that many of you here too have experienced the shock of going in to help someone or, have, or who have seen something that is shocking to your senses because it's so hideous and so wrong and so cruel. Uh, you might have been put in a situation that you had to respond straight away and people were relying on you. That situation might have resulted in you not being able to help them as effectively as you would have loved to. Um, and my bestie up there in the corner, the beautiful Kay Danes, the day we met each other, um, we, we knew about each other straight away because we had a one second chat and she told me of her experience, I told her of mine and we went, right, we are so connected through our, through our experiences with PTS and how that experience changed the rest of our life, empowered us to go on and help others and to fight for right, as Kay is so good at doing for the rest of our lives. So that is the, the unknown price of courage. Right. As you can see by the photo there, people come in all shapes and sizes. We've got our honorary padre there, his ex-army. We've got a SAS commando. We've got um, we've got Keith Payne there, who is the um, oldest surviving recipient of the Victoria Cross. So we have some very, very interesting, fascinating, but more importantly, kind and caring people who present themselves to look after and mentor the new rescuers that come through. So in about uh, about eleven years ago. Uh, the ABA saw the need to support youth because we were getting more youth members coming through. Um, in this photo here, you can see three gorgeous little girls. So the two girls next to me, they were both in a terrible car accident where a car, they were stopped at a traffic jam where the roadworks were going on and someone behind them was in a large vehicle and didn't stop in time, went over the top and young Molly, who is the one with the black necklace, she was trapped and sandwiched inside the car and the paramedics were there and the only person who could get her out was her big sister, Jade L. So Jade L crawled into that teeny weeny space and got her sister out. Before that, she received her bravery award. And the little girl on the right, that's Kaylee Caulfield and her story will bring you to tears and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. So I have the great thrill of being mama bear, auntie, nana, whatever they need um, uh, for all the Brave Youth of Australia. So I'll tell you a little bit about the Brave Youth of the Year Award. It was founded in 2008 and basically we had a nice fellow called Dr. Jeffrey Boyce said, I'm happy to donate $500 a year to help support our Brave Youth of the Year Award. So these are kids that were 18 or under at the time of their rescue. So every October, I write to Government House and to the Royal Humane Society and I ask them uh, to send me the citations that they have received that year of rescue events um, performed by people who were 18 or under at the time of the rescue. Um, the reason we put it together is that we realise that these kids uh, were from young families and they generally didn't have uh, extra resources to go to events, particularly our national one where we do all our great work, which is in Canberra, which is our nation's capital. And it's quite expensive to get to Canberra and accommodation, it all adds up and young families can't do that. So by being able to uh, support 
uh, one brave youth a year to attend Canberra, they can not only get to, uh, to all the events that we run there, but they can have a life-changing experience. Um, the fear and the horror that they're still encountering, probably on a daily, nightly basis, particularly when they go to sleep, of the rescue experiences, uh, is somewhat offset by the beautiful experience that we are able to provide them with. Uh, so it was $500 um, in 2008. Of course, prices have gone up a lot for travel and accommodation. So <coughs> $500 doesn't get us very far these days. So that's why we seek donations. So the way the Brave Youth uh, um, evaluation is run is I get the citations. I send it out to the panel. Our panel consists of six and we all have uh, different bravery award, ex bravery uh, rescue experiences. For example, I am not as concerned about rescues that are done in the ocean because I'm a diver and that doesn't scare me much, but fires really scare me. My husband is not on the panel, but just as a, a way of comparison, he's a firefighter. So anything in a fire does not scare him, but water things scare him. So that's why it's important to have diversity on the evaluation panel. So um, the, uh, Citations get sent out to the, the panel and then they rate them three to the num number one gets three points, number two gets two points, and we tally it up. And then the, the highest scorer uh, gets a call from me uh, or a letter actually from Government House uh, saying, You've been um, awarded highly in the Brave Youth of the Year Award, um, and on offer is a trip to Canberra and $500 towards your expenses. Um, the condition is that you have to be available to have to travel to Canberra because it's not just a cash handout, there you go, good on you, see you later. It's not that at all. That doesn't achieve any of our purposes. So once say the highest ranked um, Brave Youth recipient uh, accepts that, we then go into overcharge, uh, helping them set up their accommodation, uh, their fees, and that's when I get on the scramble, trying to find some more money to get down because they can't travel by themselves, particularly if they're young, they've got to get mum to go down with them or dad as a minimum. I mean, they're gonna meet the governor general. So therefore mum and dad wanna go and the kids wanna go, but these are young families and quite often, you know, they're renovating their house. They've got two working parents or mums at home. They don't have much money, they can't do this. And they certainly didn't plan for it because it's come completely out of the blue. So that's why we need to be able to say, now, you know, how, uh, is, it, is this a budgetary uh, problem that you can't join us? And they kind of say, yeah, it is. I said, oh, right, yeah, we might be able to help you with that. So what you just saw was the Brave Youth of the Year Award with some wonderful names in there. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to the first one, um, and it's James Foley. So have a look at that headline from the paper. Can you believe that? Heroic father dies after rescuing his wife and his kids. A devoted dad died after braving fierce flames to get his family from a fire that destroyed their home. So here's James. James was 16 at the time. He's a country boy. The Brave, Youth, the, the Brave Youth Award enabled us to get him to the nation's capital. Where he is there is on the top of our Parliament House. It's like, um, like the White House, except when it was designed, uh, the architect made it so that the people could walk over the top <laughs> of the governors and everyone in there so that the people were in power and had control. So that's right on top of where the Senate sits and everything. So it's kind of cool. So I'll tell you what James did. In the early hours of 17th of October, 2000, James rescued family members from their burning home in rural Victoria. James was woken by his father yelling that the family home was on fire. The house was filled with smoke and in the darkness, James woke his younger sister. He immediately smashed a window and helped push her through the opening to the outside of the building. Concerned for the safety of his two younger brothers, James ran into the rear of the burning house to check their whereabouts. He pulled doors off their hinges and he crawled through the building, which was now being engulfed by fire. James continued to check his brothers, yelling out their names. Fearing for their lives, he crawled further into a house when he discovered both boys and was able to assist them out of the building and to safety with the rest of the family. James ran for help to the next door neighbour, then moved the family car from the scene of the fire, getting his brothers and sisters into the vehicle to ensure their safety. By his actions, James Foley displayed considerable bravery. 
Now, I'm good in the water and I'm okay with sharks, but fires, like I said, that scares the daylights out of me. I do not know how he did that at 16. James shared he was haunted by the feelings that he contributed to his father's death by not waking earlier. His years after the fire were clouded in confusion, antisocial behaviour, alcoholic abuse and depression, which is getting better as time goes by. James is now 27. This is what we were able to do to give James something to smile about because of his rescue. As I said, we got him and his family to Canberra. Uh, we got him to Government House, to the home of the Governor, to the Memorial Bravery Service. There he is with his bag of fruit, wearing bag of fruit, the suit, wearing his bravery medal. And he's in there in the Governor's lounge room by the Governor's grand piano, which has photos of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles and the royal family on it. Kind of cool. And there he is with uh, Dan Quentin Bryce. Who, is, who was our governor at the time. So a country kid and there he is with the leader of the land. Kind of cool, look at that smile. That's James. Okay, now here's our saddest one, the youngest bravery recipient, aged four at the time of his rescue. When our Queensland governor read out this citation at the investiture, he choked on his words and he never chokes on his words. He said, this is the saddest. I cannot believe I'm giving a bravery reward to someone who was four, so sad. So there's the headline. Isn't this a beautiful family? Here they are all getting their bravery rewards. There's young Zane on the left. And you'll see mum on the left. She has a shawl over her left arm I'll tell you why. Just after 10 p.m. on 11th of April, 2014, Master Zane Fields provided assistance to his younger sister and them after their mother had been wounded during a domestic violence assault in Queensland. Zane, aged four at the time, his four siblings and their mother were home when they heard noises outside the house. Concerned for their safety, they all moved into a bedroom. His mother went to investigate the noise and on approaching the front door, they saw the offender, it was her ex-husband was drunk and extremely violent. She immediately ran back into the bedroom, locking the door with all her kids. The offender broke down the door and fired a gun at her. She jumped. The bullet hit her in her left arm, causing extensive damage. My beautiful friend Don. Stuffy odors and releases a subtle hint of fragrance, like bamboo. Would you like to help Donna mute? Thank you. As the offender continued to assault his mother, Zane's two brothers grabbed hold of the offender's arms, wrestling the man to prevent further injuries. So Zane's two big brothers, you can see in the picture there, they jumped on the father and they wrestled him and they'd done some movie acting course two weeks before and they knew how to disarm him. They were 14 and 12 at the time. So they blacked him out in a neck choke and tied him up. Meanwhile, Zane's elder sister, that's little Kaylee, who you saw in the photo previously, she dragged her mother outside onto the balcony, laid her down, elevated her feet. I said to her, darling, how did you know to elevate her feet? She said, I saw it on the TV. She was 10. And then she got the home first aid kit out, little box like this. Mother's arm was dangling. It had been so severely smashed. So she was able to try and patch up her mother's arm with this little home kit. And the other brother there, the second one, the middle-sized one in the light blue suit, he grabbed the gun and he threw it under the house where no one could get for it. Astonishing bravery for these kids. But little Zane got his little sister, Samantha, who was 18 months, and he hid her under the bed. And he climbed in there with her, hiding her and keeping her peaceful. So wasn't that beautiful? So that's how Zane got his bravery award. Uh, Rachel, uh, the children's mother, Rachel, had her arm mangled by a shot from a rifle. It was aimed at her heart. Today, after six years of therapy and over 40 surgeries, they have managed to save her arm. Rachel can now hug her children with both arms. A wonderful achievement considering until last year, 
her left arm hung useless by her side. She never gave up hope, even through life with four traumatised children, which presents challenges on a daily basis. Love, determination and resilience support her every day. And in that photo, you can see Jaden and Kaylee, due to the Brave Youth of the Year Award, we were able to fly them to Melbourne and to give them a life changing experience, a money can't buy experience. There they are receiving the Brave Youth of the Year Award with the Governor of Victoria. And look at those smiles. Kaylee turned up with a backpack with one little dress in it. So we went to the op shop. Who knows what an op shop is? Kay does. So it's your charity shop, you know your second hand shop? So whenever we have events, we always make sure we can get Kaylee there one way or another in a bus or in a car. And she turns up in a little backpack with one dress. So we take her op shopping and we buy her a dress and we buy her the right things to wear under it. And we all have a ball. She loves it. So here is a very sad one. This is beautiful Kaylin. He was age seven. Here's Kaylin and his little brother, Kaya. Kaylin was seven at the time. You see Kaylin's head? See his scars? This is the price that Kaylin paid, saving the life of his brother. On the afternoon of the 31st of August, Kaylin Hode rescued his little brother from an oncoming vehicle. Kaylin's mother was attending to his sister in the ladies' washroom after her dance class, whilst he and his little brother waited for them. When his mother was distracted, his brother ran out of the dance studio, video, studio building and through the car park. Kaylin close followed, closely followed as Kaya ran out. Kaya was only four, so he was very little. And he ran into the traffic onto a busy road. Kaylin immediately grabbed his brother's arm and pushed him back onto the, fall, onto the footpath and out of the way of the oncoming traffic. At this point, a four wheel drive, which was unable to stop at such short distance, hit Kaylin, causing severe injury. By his actions, Master Kaylin Ho displayed considerable bravery. As you can see, Kaylin's bravery came at a huge personal cost. He has a developmental age of seven or eight. He's now 13. Significant disabilities, seizures, which needs medical marijuana, which has finally become legal here in Australia, which is wonderful. His mother has ongoing counselling. And of course, he has ongoing phys physical therapies. Kaylin is now able to walk short distances, unassisted, and is attending school. Winning the Brave Youth of the Year Award for 2015 meant that Kaylin and his family were able to travel to Canberra to meet the Governor General, to attend the annual Memorial Bravery Service and experience the fun of visiting our nation's capital as tourists. The family remain extremely grateful to the ABA and share Kaylin's progress whenever he achieves another milestone on his recovery. And here's the saddest one. Zach Bissell, what a beautiful young man. On the evening of the 6th of August, 2011, Zachary Bissell rescued a friend at Como Rail Station in New South Wales. Mr Bissell was 18 and with a group of friends was on a platform at Como Railway Station waiting for a city bound train to arrive. The group had purchased tickets for the 640 train. However, when the train arrived at the station, only some of the group were able to board before the doors closed. The rest of the group stood on a platform waiting for the 7 p.m. service. But before the train arrived, one of the group who was drunk jumped off the platform onto the train tracks and began running south. He ran until he reached the end of the station where the tracks coming from different directions met. He continued to run for about 30 metres. Mr Bissell immediately jumped down off the platform and began yelling at his friend to get off the tracks. The train travelling south towards Sutherland was quickly approaching. Mr Bissell pulled his friend towards the other track and out of the way of the passing train. Tragically, Mr Bissell was stuck by, struck by the northbound train and he died from his injuries. Zach's story lives on.
in the Australian Annals of Bravery through the Brave Youth of the Year Award. And his family feel the support and understanding of being part of the ABA family. They enjoy the annual reunions and having the opportunity to be with other rescues who appreciate Zach's contribution and the challenges of losing a loved one as a result of an act of kindness. So here we have Zach's sister, his mother and his brother, and they are at the plinth that, se that celebrates those who lost their life in the act of bravery. This is in the Memorial, Memorial Bravery Garden, which is at the residence of the Governor General. Now, moving on to one more recent. Here's my surfer boys. Here they are, down the beach, doing what they love. On the morning of the 26th September, Tom Harper and Jay Waters went to the assistance of another surfer during a shark attack in Ballon in New South Wales. Both boys were then aged 16. And they were surfing at Lighthouse Beach with another friend. As they paddled on their boards out to their friend, they saw his board lift up out of the water as a four metre great white shark attacked. The boys saw the shark lunging at their friend, grabbing his leg and the surfboard, knocking him into the water. Despite the danger, Mr Harper and Mr Waters immediately paddled out to the injured boy where they saw that the shark was temporarily tangled in the boy's leg rope. Without hesitation, the boys each grabbed hold of their friend's arm, placing him between their surfboards and began to paddle to shore. By this time, the shark had managed to disentangle itself from the leg group and began to pursue the boys at a close distance. Despite the threat of the shark attacking again, the boys conveyed their injured friend to shore where he was treated by emergency services before being taken to the Lismore Base Hospital where he recovered from his injuries. By their actions, Mr. Harper and Water displayed considerable courage. Tom and Jay received their brave rewards. In May, 2019 at Government House Brisbane, and I was there winning the Bravery of the Youth Award, winning the Brave Youth of the Year Award, enabled them to be part of the last post wreath laying ceremony at the Australian War Memorial at Canberra. Look at them there. They've both got their first ever suit. Don't they look beautiful? And there they were able to learn more about bravery of our armed, for, armed forces personnel in current and previous campaigns and generations. They will never forget this experience that was made possible because of the Brave Use of the Year Award. And these boys, um, their families were able to join us only because we were able to source some extra funds to get them down there. They had just, you know, in the months before I called them up about this, they'd just paid for their high school graduation. They had other kids. They had renovations going on at their house. Um, so they had no extra money to fund a trip down to Canberra, but because of the ABA and the Brave Youth of the Year Award, we were able to make that magic happen. So this is a really exciting one for the Global Trekkers because, because of the kind donation of you, our Global Trekkers, this beautiful young boy was able to get from Western Australia over to the East Coast for the first time in his life. And here he is. Here's young Billy Kelly. There's his sister and his mum on the left. Chrissy, look at her, proud as punch. And with them is our Governor General, the Queen's representative of Australia, Major Hurley, His Excellency and his wife, Lynn. Very, very kind people. And there we are at the National Memorial Bravery Service, which is at the uh, Memorial Bravery Garden at Government House. So let me tell you about Billy. Remember, we couldn't have got Billy there without your help, without the 700 US thousand Australian that you got there. Because of that, Billy's sister was able to come. His mum could pay for his sister because we chipped in to get Billy and his mum there. So high five, you guys, high five. I share Billy's story with you. So Billy was 12 
in 2017. And he was playing on the trampoline in the backyard of his home while his mother and uh, his auntie were sitting on the home's front deck. His mother became aware of an unknown man in their front yard. She called out to the man telling him to leave, but he continued to stay in their yard. William's mother then went out to the garage where the man charged at her and began assaulting her physically. Mrs. Kelly's sister ran out to her and attempted to pull the offender off, but the offender grabbed both women and began to drag them down the gravel highway. He grabbed a rock and he struck Chrissy before continuing to assault her sister. Concerned for the safety of his mother and auntie, William quickly jumped onto the man to try and stop the attack. He grabbed a small branch and struck the offender on the head. So he was 12 years old. Diverted from the assault, the offender began chasing William around the car, shouting threats. Using a mobile phone, Billy called the police and stayed on the line for over 30 minutes providing details of the offender and the assault. With the offender distracted, William's mother and her friend managed to make it to safety of the house and William joined them a short time later. For his actions, Mr. Kelly is commended for brave conduct. <laughs> and there he is being awarded the Brave Youth of the Year trophy. So you can see I have the perpetual trophy there in my right hand and in his he has his take home Brave Youth of the Year award made from a Mallee stump. Mallee is a very sturdy um, type of undergrowth that grows in Australia and it, it um, polishes up really well. So each Brave Youth of the Year recipient gets a very special trophy to take home. So here's what we do with the Bravery Association. Here's our call for help for anyone who has $10 or more who would like to share and support ongoing work, I promise not to pressure you because I know you all do so much to help so many people all around the world. <laughs> so, as you can see, I take my role of mother, auntie, sister, uh, leader of merriment and laughs of the brave youth very seriously. They all get an arty cell. Every brave youth, once they get down to Canberra, they get a raft of aunties and uncles and grandfathers and mothers and sisters, but very special ones because they've all received bravery awards. So with this cohort of people, they know they are understand, they are understood. They know they can talk to them about the nightmares that they might be having. They know they can under, uh, talk to them about the shivers they might get. Uh, the feelings of uncertainty they might experience because we've all been through it and we've all navigated it. And just as importantly for their families and the rescuers, they can all see that we've got a great life now, that we're having a good time, that we get together, that we're not constantly um, taken over by our post-traumatic stress. And, you know, PTS fades. It can go depending on your... Um, on your experience, I mean, that was the only, my shark attack was the only really awfully, awfully frightening thing I've had in my life. So mine, you know, I was able, mine was able to dissipate, you know, with professional help and by talking to my friends and people who've had longer exposures to it and terrible things like our beautiful Kay Danes, well, her journey's going to take a bit longer than mine, but she's doing a great job in Life After Rescue, and uh, she's just such a champion. We're so proud to have her in the Bravery Association. She's such an inspiration to so many people. Okay, so here we are. Now, I'll just show you quickly those beautiful kids in the photo there. So on the right is Kaylee, who you met before. She was the one who dragged her mother out after she'd had her arm shot off and put, did her up in the um, little first aid kit. And then second to the right is Molly, who who is a sister to Jade L, who pulled her sister out of the car. So those little girls have grown up and they're 15 now. I got such a shock when I saw them today. It would have knocked your socks off seeing how much mm -hmm. they've grown up. So there's Jade L in the black dress with her Red Bravery Award on and her two tall twin sisters next to her. And in the middle is Billy and check out the smile on his face. Hey, how good is he looking? 
how good is he feeling? Yeah, I'm the man. Instead of feeling rotten about what he saw. And next to uh, Jade L is beautiful Kayla. So Kayla's mum tried to join us earlier, but um, she couldn't get on, unfortunately. And Kayla is quite an accomplished uh, surf lifesaver. And her father, she and her father and her brother Jake there, isn't he gorgeous? Cute as punch in his, in his penguin suit. Uh, they were paddling out on, on their surfboards uh, in a canal and their dad had a seizure because he, was, he had brain tumours. And they finally actually took him two years ago, which is shocking. Oh. He had a seizure on his board and sunk down. He's a very fit man, so he didn't float. People who have more buoyancy, like me, uh, float when they go in the water. But others sink uh, if they're very muscular and very fit. She rescued her dad and she's beautiful. And she joined us for the first time. She just got her bravery award in September and I was there to support her through that. So that's our brave... That's, sub that, that, that's the brave kids who were able to come to Canberra this year. So here we are. Here's you, the Global Trekkers All-Stars down there, making that possible for Billy and family to be down there. So we're so thrilled to be able to include you in this wonderful family. So these kids, just winding up, because I know I've run over time, but that's okay. So how remarkable is it to know that our kids can not only conquer their fear, but they can overcome the greatest physical challenges of their life through love and perseverance, as young Callan Hode shows us every day. He could be a bitter and twisted young man, but he's very kind, he's very loving, he loves getting his hugs, and he loves his bravery family. Uh, Mike Pearson, who's, uh, who you can see is online there, who... Um, who you can't see his smiling face. But every year, Mike and his wife, Lovey, host a special event for our people who can't get down to Canberra. And it's the Courageous Kids Camp Out! And Mikey collate, gathers up all his timber and all his wood, even from the neighbours' houses, because he's got quite a big uh, backyard. And he creates a big bonfire. And we all go camping at Mikey's place. So Callan's dad sets up a tent for Callan. And the, put, the marshmallows like Kay and I, we sleep inside on a nice soft bed. But all the brave kids and the other families who want to come and be part of that, good, clean, free fun, we camp out and set up the tents in the back of Mikey's. So there's all sorts I'm glamping. of glamping. I'm glamping, Sally. Yes, yes, you and I are definitely glampers, aren't we? Yes. So there you go, my dear friends and Global Trekkers. Thank you so much for giving me the privilege to present to you. It's a real thrill. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Oh, way to go, girlfriend. I'm so glad you mentioned um, Mike and Wendy, a.k.a. Mm. Lovey. Lovey mm. that we call her. Um, what beautiful people. Um, and, and particularly Wendy. Mike, as Mike would agree, Wendy is such a special woman to be a, a, a spouse of a serviceman, of a policeman in, in these times. That, that's, a, that's a real challenge in itself. And, and um, she is a very, very lovely lady, very kind lady. And Mike and, and Wendy just open up their hearts, their doors. I mean, gosh, we have fun. We have fun. And that's what it's all about. So... Um, we should Thank get Mike, Mike to present to us one meeting. You know, Absolutely. some of the Absolutely. And, and um, Sally, if you want to make that connection with Ray, because Ray's our speaker seeker, and uh, I'm sure he would, he would love to. Ah, yeah, Mike's typing in the chat box. What a great guy and what a wonderful woman. Um, Julian's joined us, Claudette. Um, they've joined us and we'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Um, Julian, not many of, or some of you new faces won't know who Julian is, but I'm so excited because uh, we haven't seen Julian for a while. And um, what we'll do is we'll say a quick hello to Julian and Claudette because they've joined us late. Um, and then we'll go back to Romany and, uh, and Romany will finish up the meeting, give a thank you to Sally, do the four-way test, and then you can ask questions of Sally, if that's okay. So Julian, where are you, where are you coming in from today? Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. yes. 
Um, I'm dialing in from Bogota, Colombia. Wow. 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 Hmm. I knew that. <laughs> yes. So you can probably tell by my accent, I am an Aussie as well, but uh, I've moved to South America at the end of January. Um, I'm living here at the moment with my girlfriend and her family. I'm currently in lockdown because of coronavirus as well. So like everywhere in the world. But yeah, I decided to try something new and I'm working as a English as a second language teacher here. And you're a bit remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm, in case people here aren't aware, I know Ray and I know Cookie. Um, I used to be in the Rotary Club of Next Gen Queensland in, in Gold Coast, Australia. Coast? So I... Sorry? That's where I am. Sorry, darling. I got excited. Oh, yes? You're on the Gold Coast as well? <laughs> Early heads, mate. Oh, nice. I, I used to live in Annerley in Brisbane. So, yeah, not too far away. So, yeah, so, yeah Ray, Ray and I got to, to meet you when we were traveling in Australia. And uh, I remember uh, a picnic, I believe. <laughs> That's right. You actually swore me in as a Rotarian cookie. There, did it You stick? were the person that took my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm not actually a Rotarian right this moment. I sort of left Rotary about two and a half years ago. But um, Kay recently contacted me and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in coming to, yeah, see, she's rubbing her hands there. So <laughs> she's, um, she's invited me to come to your meeting to check out what you guys do. And given that I'm pretty much the same time difference now, it makes sense to hop online and see what you guys are up to. Uh, what, what, a great, what a great treat to, uh, to see you again. You know, you, you, travel halfway around the world and you meet somebody you think you'll never see them again. I mean, you know, and uh, it's very exciting. And I knew that you had um, traveled um, around the world as well. So fun to connect up with you tonight. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very no much. No pressure to come back next week, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I'd like to. Um, I'm still trying to get used to my busy teaching schedule, even though yeah. I am in lockdown. Thankfully, being an online English teacher, I can still work. But yeah, I don't tend to have classes at this time of day. So yeah, hopefully I can come online and join your meetings. That'd be good. No, oh, it, it is well, fun to visit. They have great speakers and uh, the camaraderie is wonderful. So I always enjoy coming. Mm, and coincidence, have, um, I come on a day where an Australian is speaking, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good on you. Just nice work, Australian. <laughs> I'm so glad it wasn't me speaking. Um, we're going to go down south to where you are in Bogota. We're going to go down south to Brazil. Okay. We have a very nice. special lady tuning in from Brazil. Claudette. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good morning to you and good evening Hi. to others. I arrived late, but uh, it's always very a good time to join your meetings. The nice environment, the good people, and uh, to see that you are all fine and hope you will be so <laughs> for a long time. Thank you, sister. Good to see you again. We missed you last time. I miss your presentation. I was very sorry, but I need to see the video. I got the video, but I was busy in a long tra translation of more than 200 pages finished last night. So mm. now I'm going to follow up my emails. <laughs> That's okay, Claudette. You can check it out tomorrow, lovey. <laughs> and Donna. Uh, Donna, unmute yourself and say hi to the group. She might not know how to unmute herself. Everyone joining us tonight is my very dear friend, Donna Nesler. Donna and her husband, Rick, are the most wonderful musicians. I met them in uh, 2012 at the Illawarra Folk Festival and we just clicked so it's big time because they're such kind people. I went and stayed with them two years ago and they took me up to... Bethel Woods, where the Woodstock Museum is. So cool. And then in January, they came back here. So I took my Samara down there, my little mini me, who's musical and 12, down to see them at the Illawarra Folk Festival. And then Donna and Rick came and stayed 
up uh, at my place on the Gold Coast and you know what? They brought their music into my mum's aged care facility and put a concert on yeah. for mum and her friends, played all <laughs> her favourite songs. And they talk about it every time I'm chatting to mum on Skype now. The nurses come in, oh, we loved your concert. And another <laughs> one go, oh, I'm so sorry we missed your concert. So Donna, say good day to the team. Oh, I'm not sure what time of day it is for you all, but good day to all of you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> It's always wonderful to see Sally, even if it's virtually. <laughs> oh, it's great. Well, you know, most of them, um, put your hand up if you're in the USA. Show Donna where she is. Okay. So, and, and Donna's husband, Rick, plays a pretty mean banjo, by the way. Oh, no, Donna does that. Rick's got a 12 string. And, you know, <laughs> they just, they re recorded. Rick actually has a Grammy, a Grammy. Really? For a song he wrote with Pete Seeger. Oh, Seeger. oh wow. These guys are besties with Pete <laughs> Seeger. They did so much fundraising and community work to clean up the Hudson River to start a not for profit, the Clearwater. They built a boat. I know they didn't, I know you didn't do it all by yourself, Donna. <laughs> That's what she always tells oh, no, me. No, 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 no. They have done so much. Community effort. Them. Community yeah, effort so like all of you have. Yes, so Donna, we'd like you to present uh, to us one time in future something on whatever you like, whether it's music, whether it's the Clearwater Project, but um, fascinating mm -hmm. stories of, of kindness and community work. And thank maybe you, she'll play you. for us one day too. Oh, yeah. Wow. That, that well, would be take great. Take over from great. Sally, because Sally usually gets her ukulele up there. Hey, Donna oh, gave you gonna... first ever lesson. It's her fault. Okay. Guys, I've got to crack the whip again. Um, okay. We're running oh. over. Thank I'm going to hand over to the um, the, the president-elect, Dr. Romani Gunnis from Trinidad and Tobago, one of our favourite places. And, Good day, um, everyone. Okay. See, I'm Good trying night. to be. I'm trying to join the great Australian reunion that seems to be happening tonight. So that's the best <laughs> I can do for now. Um, I do have to take a special moment to say thank you to Sally fellow Global Trekker, who we are all very proud to know and to be a part of uh, your journey. Um, when you were presenting, Sally, I thought of something very specific about you. Um, I've looked at your diving stuff and I've looked at your Australian bravery stuff and everything else that you talk about. And when I think of you, I think of a candle. Um, we say that a candle burns itself so that others could get light. And having to give this presentation every year so many times, you would have had to dig back into your own experience, plus the listening to the stories. And that takes a special kind of courage, because I think courage comes in different levels. And there's a special kind of courage when you can dig deep in yourself to relive something that you've been through so that others could understand it and grow from it and learn from it and be better from it. And um, a special thank you from all of us of having that kind of courage and doing that for us because not all of us will ever be able to go through that ever we're living vicariously in ways through you yes so thank you very much yes well, and um in honor of you and all the brave australians let's do the four-way test together so i'm yay. going to share that with you now thank you romani get your global checker on <laughs> so on your marks get set let's go <laughs> The four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Live long and prosper. Thank you so much, Sally. That was wonderful. Romany, Romany, what a great way to pay tribute. That was beautiful. Sally, thank you, too. <laughs> complete thank you, honor, Romany. Complete honor to be part of Global Trekkers and to, you know, you guys, you charge my, my emotional bank account. You fill it right up and you just make, when, when days you're feeling tired and you go, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, you go, you know what? Global Trekkers, they do so much. Collectively, we all do our one little bit, another global trekker, another global trekker, there's another one, there's another one. Before you know it, bang, so much goodness and kindness and help around the world.
So cool. Thank you. Well, everyone wants to be like the Global Trekkers now because they're all going online. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 